I'm Florence Valaday 3060, staying safe in quarantine. <laughs> Let's have a look what we're doing today guys. Presenting you a vintage 1980s Black & Decker Stowaway Travel Twosome hair dryer and iron set. This was found back in 2018 in British Heart Foundation. My glorious place that I did my voluntary work in. And I do miss this day and I know a lot of others do. Uh, this was a appliance I found. Um, it's a basically a travel iron and a travel hair dryer compacted into one kit rather than buying them separately. If you hear it in the background, oh, by the way, that's the Creda tumble dryer, just doing a load that I did in the Miele earlier. Uh, this, going by the design, dates back to the 80s, uh, pretty much the same as that Stowaway 1000 hair dryer that we reviewed the other week. Uh, this basically came in its original box, which is this, fantastic 80s look to it, a little bit of scuff here and there, it's designed to look like a travel case. You have some information on the back here and look at that oh so 80s hairstyle, I'm sorry about the light guys, let's see if my neon light will do any better, there we go, a bit better. Uh, so we have the iron with the folding handle and this is how it comes in a neat and nifty travel bag. You got some information here, Versatile 600 1200 watt compact hair dryer with two heat settings and blow styling nozzle for greater flexibility and control. Plus, pack flat lightweight dry iron with thermostat control and easy glide non stick sample player. Oh, it's a dry iron. Plus, attractive travel holder for handy carrying and storage. Take the trouble out of travel. Dual voltage travel to some for beautiful clothes and hair anywhere. Oh, you can look good for a quick night out at the disco in one. Black and Decker, famous for their power tools. So, model SW102, made in Hong Kong. Is there anything on the other side? So, that's the, I think SW102 is gonna be the hairdryer, probably, unless the whole thing is. So, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna unbox this for the first time in two years. But I've had it, and we're gonna see what it's all about. Starting with the iron first, and then the hairdryer. Just about uh, good timing because I'm gonna have my shower soon. Let's get opening. Let's open then. So, we start from opening here. It's a nifty bag. I've never taken this out of its bag. We don't even know if it actually works or not. We'll find out. Stowaway. Bit of uh, dust on this. Probably been stored for two years. A lovely vintage travel bag. Nothing else in the box. Finally dispose of that after this. Uh, probably by Velcro. Look at that, like a nifty travel bag. I do that. There's just a really weird like feeling on this, like it's really old and it's about to all paint peel and whatnot. But look at that vintage 80 style look on it. Like the red and white sort of checkerboard. Velcro. Ooh, got some paperwork here. Let's have a look. Emergency mending kit. Look at this. Doesn't mention you get that. This is probably for your clothes. Look at that, you get, wow, you get some safety pins, but two buttons and different colour threads. And a needle in there too. Look at that. Oh, I don't know anywhere you get that. I've never seen a vintage kit. Let's keep that aside. This presumably would be the instruction manual, there's nothing else. Is it on, is it? Black & Decker Stowaway Compact Dryer. This is the hair dryer. Let's have a look through what the contents give us. So that's to change the voltage. Appliance must not be taken into the bathroom. Why do they say that? Yet yeah, in caravans and public swimming pools, you've got a hair dryer in the bathroom. Oh, in hotels as well you have one. I really don't get it. 
Neutral live. Yeah, these um, hair dryers are never earthed. Kind of actually surprises me, considering you're practically holding a fan and a live heating element in your hand. Right, let's pull back this and see what we get. Oh, another. This will be for the iron. I hope the iron's earthed. SW100 is the... I swear SW100 is the same mold as the other one that I've got. Diagram parts. You can all pause this if you need to. Does it tell you iron is called the white soul plate? Another part. Do not leave the iron switch on when it is unattended. Some will have the iron yourself. Stowed in the handle. You've got your assembly instructions and your voltage selection as well as your ironing guide. UK socket, and electrical socket. Turn the iron off. Never pull the plug out of the iron. Let's have a look. Precautions. Yeah, we are earthed. You would need to because you have got a live element heating in there. But don't get wire hair dryers on. Probably gonna get quite warm in this room, it will. Right, let's pop all this back in, and what I'll do is we'll take the hairdryer out, and we'll take both appliances out anyway. So, we've got a lovely red and white 80s cord. Oh, we one of these, we don't have a plug, that's presumably the hairdryer. Don't worry, I've got a plug sitting spare that we can use. That's interesting, that shows how old this is. It came before everything was required to have a fully fitted plug. So... I'm going to start by taking the hairdryer out, because that's what's closest to me, i able to get out. So apart from it not having a, a cable uh, wire on it, it comes in a little plastic uh, body in there as well. Here's the Stowaway 1200 hairdryer. Again, this looks like it's never been used. I'll get my phone quickly. All right, and I just zoom... Okay, I'll show you something. Look at this. It's not like a trace of dust on that at all. Well, obviously it hasn't been used because it hasn't got a uh, K, uh, thing on it, a plug. It's also still in 240 volts. And yeah, here's your information. SW103 is the model number of this. 355. I don't know if there's any dates on it. And you've literally got one. So it'd be the same as the other one. Uh, so you've got off in the middle. Your rocker switch goes setting one, which will also which will be low speed and low heat, and then setting two will be high speed plus high heat. And a fantastic uh, nozzle on the end. Hey, well, sort of a, sort of an air concentrator. And if I pop that off, it should come off. But like Donald Duck's beak, unless it screws off. Some of them actually screw off. There you go. That's just used for normal without that. So that's the hair dryer. Beautiful red and white colour. So again, it's a very, very 80s look that is. Here's the iron now, which does have a fully fitted plug. There's the rest of the bag in there. So, here we go, looking at this. This uh, is not just stowaway. Model SW100. So the whole thing is SW102 then. That has been Put to, to 120 volt, I think. I think. I can't see. Might need to toggle it with a pair of scissors. Let's have a look. So that's now on 120. That's now on 240 volt, so it was on 240. That's another full. So we have a fully fitted plug, insulated cord grip, uh, standard MK plug. 13 amp. Let's, sorry about that. Uh, Uncoil that. That's quite a long plug for a travel iron, that is. So, how you do it, you just simply. Uh, where is it on this one? Hmm, okay. Um, so in this one it was again, wasn't it? I should know how to do this. Oh no, hang on. Should we slide out? Slide out. Then you'll basically attach this onto there, it should be. I think that's what it says to do. Oh, there you are. Push this down and across there. And you adjust your thermostat across there. Basically holding it like that. Very old-fashioned style. 
Um, you release it by pulling down on that. Yeah. Is it all push push forward? I'm new to this. <laughs> And just basically put that around. It's got Black & Decker stowaway, so it can be sort of stored any way you want. And as long as it goes in there and hooks in. So I'm going to start off by using the iron. It is a dry iron, so we will not be using any water. So I'll just get a pair of cloth or sort of cloth or something to do. And then we'll get out of the shower and do the hair dryer. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> start with we're going to demonstrate the Black & Decker SW100 Stowaway Travel Iron, Dry Iron, this is so it does not use water or steam. So we'll take the, like this out, position that onto there, and lock in place. And now plug in using a surge guard extension lead, and we'll go ahead with the iron plugged in. The temperature indicator uh, point is here, we are off. So what I'm going to do is I am going to switch, I'm going to first tilt it up so we do not burn anything and I'm going to put it all the way to cotton. There's no, there's no indicator light on here to tell me this is on, so do be aware once you turn that dial, that's going to be on. You can instantly feel some heat coming off the back. It's, you can tell that it's new because that is giving off, might see a bit of a, uh, smoke coming off that, I don't know if you can, it's burning off all the residue, so you know what we're going to do, don't you guys? We're going to iron an old towel of mine. This will ensure that we get off any of that residue. Oh god, that really smells. So, I'm going to just put a bit of water on this towel. Blimey, it smells like, um, Oh, it's burning plastic, it smells like. Whew. So you wouldn't want to iron your clothes with that first door. That's basically the new... Oh! Did the electricity go off? Yeah! Alright, so I've just switched off the iron. Uh, and we are immediately going to scrap that. Um, I'm going to cut the cord on it. I really don't know what happened there. Um, and as I say, you're meant to iron damp cloth but that I wonder if it's because it's a dry iron I don't know but you no but you're you're still allowed to you're still allowed to iron wet clothes but because it's a dry ironing um yeah I mean there was there was stuff burning off the bottom of it but um Nah, that's probably toast iron now. Um, the smell it was giving off, I was trying to describe it, it's sort of like a plastic electrical burning smell, but I just thought it was just maybe because it was old, it had dust on it. Uh, but whatever has happened, I'm not going to refuse this iron, I'm going to scrap it. Uh, we'll go on to the hairdryer. Um, it's maybe a bit paranoid to use the bloody hairdryer now, that's going to be in the bloopers this year. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. Blimey, that stinks that iron. I know irons normally burn when they are brand new. It tripped uh, all the electrics to the upstairs. And it's not because the, the dryer was on or anything, because the dryer weren't on. Yeah, I'm not sure, I don't know what was wrong with that iron. Um, okay, so well that's gonna be scrap. I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut off the cable to it. Okay, so I've just gotten out of the shower and yeah, the reason I wear a hat guys is because look at my hair. How incredibly long that is. Because there's nowhere open to get my hair cut, I might have to do it myself, but I'm normally wearing that hat. So, I still haven't figured out what's wrong with our iron. Um, I know it's got 
absolutely nothing to do with what I did uh, with the water because you were meant to do that with an, with an iron. And dry irons are supposed to be, and they can be, and they can be used with uh, wet garments to dry them. Well, my, I'm trying to bust the iron open. I can't see a way to open it, but I'm trying to get it open to see if there's anything wrong. Maybe, as I said, it's not been open for probably 30 years or more. Um, we don't know what it, what conditions it was stored in. Uh, you also got to remember that it was found at British Art Foundation, and it wasn't found in the store where I did all my testing in that little section. This was found in the back where the cage was. So what I reckon has probably happened with that is it might have been thrown about by them, and it's obviously you know that box has received some damage to it where it's been thrown about and whatnot. So my nose a bit itchy there. Um, what I think has probably happened is most likely the heating element has probably been knocked loose in it um obviously i started it heating vertically because obviously you didn't want to you know you never put an iron down and heat it because it will start burning things especially those travel irons get hot very quick so what's obviously happened is maybe i'm thinking that the elements probably been like that and it's probably been loose i've given it a shake and i can't hear anything and probably as I've gone to put it down, the elements contacted the front of the uh, the bottom of the plate, and as I put it on the thing, it just combined to make it go bang. Because maybe as I put it down, the element came in contact and it just went. Poof. Um, I mean that's quite scary because that could have happened as soon as I switched it on. Uh, that could have blown up in my face, uh, or it could have just happened as I was ironing and either I don't know. I could have been electrocuted or whatever. I don't know. Um, to go to show though with vintage appliances just because they're brand new it doesn't always mean they work um, that's both for modern and vintage but as I said yeah it doesn't necessarily mean that you know because it's brand new um, hoping we'll get better luck with the hairdryer it looks immaculate I can't see anywhere that would give any signs of anything going wrong I've given it a blast it does actually work and I've had it on high heat for about 30 seconds so it has it's been fine um, well, I'm just thankful for our RCD breaker because that probably could have ended a bit a lot worse. Um, I will try and break it open and I'll see what what exactly went wrong with it. Uh, and we'll just do that. So I'm going to plug the iron in. Now this one has a BSI kite mark plugged to it. Uh, a little more. It is a PMS plug. You can see that on there. I'm going to give this a go. It's quite loud, a bit like the other one. Let's give it a go. I'm actually physically scared. <laughs> I'm actually kind of scared, to be honest. But start it off on setting one, which is low speed and low heat, and then we'll test it on how long it takes to dry my hair. Here we go. I'll take off the thing first, actually. So hear it? You might be able to see the fan in there. I don't know if you can. Let's have a look. I'm actually quite paranoid using this now. <laughs> it's got a nice, um, clean vintage smell to it. You can see it's not, it's not incredibly powerful, maybe because I haven't got the diffuser on it. Uh, my hair's also quite thick. Okay, now I'm going to put it on high heat and high speed for 30 seconds. Bloody hell, it's like a, sounds like a Boeing 747. It does smell a bit of burning though, but that's because it's new. In fact, I'm only going to do it for 20 seconds. I'll put it back to... It won't dry my hair fully though. I'll do it for 40 seconds so I get 20 and 20. So now I'm going to put the air diffuser nozzle, oh, concentrator nozzle. It's not got too much of a narrow opening compared to other hair dryers which have it as like a small slit like that. I'm going to give this a go and see if it makes any difference. Let's do 30 seconds of that. I would do 30 seconds high heat and high speed, but after what happened, I'm just a little bit paranoid about putting that on for too long. 
Don't probably worry about nothing. Get a bit more powerful, as you see. The air feels a bit hotter with that as well. Now full heat and full speed. A lot more powerful. So, just for safety reasons, I'm not going to do that one on, uh, probably not on full thing of drying my hair. But as long as it is actually quite dry, I will put it on now on low heat and low speed to see how long it takes. Yeah, give it away. Some heat coming off that. Bloody hell! That's powerful as hell that is. Even on low heat, that is pretty hot, that is. Blimey, that's warm. <laughs> that is rated for a, uh, I think 600 watt is the low heat and 1200 for the, uh, yeah, it's a 1.2 kilowatts for the uh, high heat. So roughly that actually took a minute and 23 just to physically get me my hair almost dry. Uh, it would take a bit longer. I know, I'm sorry guys, I look, like I've been, I look like I've been through a bloody wind tunnel. But yeah, that's that. I know I look like a mess, but I'm only going to, I'm going to bed off this. So, so yeah, stir away 1200. Oh, that is really hot, that diffuser part. So I'll just uh, concentrate, I'll pop that off, take it off. Yeah, um, I'll try and get a view of the fan on this and see if you can actually see it spinning. I'll shine it through through here. Um, I should know. It's going to be loud, guys, so just turn your volume down. Got, uh, how many blades has that fan got? It's got about... I don't know how many blades. Oh yeah, it's got... One, two, three, four, five, six... No, one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven. Seven blade fan. Bloody powerful one though. Some hair dryers only have about four blades. And they're fan. Basically, a hair dryer is just a mini... Basically, a hair dryer is just a mini uh, fan heater. That's all it is. So guys, that was a Black & Decker Stowaway Travel 2 some. it's now a Travel, travel 1 some now. Uh, uh, travel iron, dry iron and a portable hairdryer. Hairdryer is key because that definitely works, but the iron unfortunately doesn't. Um, I mean, I may be able to use the iron again, but I'm just not going to risk it. I'm going to probably try and bust it open and see exactly what was wrong with it. Uh, there's two things that either could happen. It could have been what I've said about the heating element, or it could have been that, that burning that I smelt was actually part of the internal wiring burning, and I just didn't know it, and then it's just gone bang. Um, it might have just been a coincidence that when I did put it on the, the towel, it blew up. Maybe it was waiting to blow up, or I don't know. Whatever happened, at least I wasn't injured. 
but I always be cautious about these things. Um, so, uh, upcoming after this, we are going to be filming the Hotpoint 9530 again. Uh, and there's good news uh, regarding a washer dryer. I have found one, but I'm not too sure if I'm going to buy it yet. I'm going to seek some advice on it. Uh, I don't know what if I told you. I might have said that I was going to repair it. Nah. I've thought about it, and I'm not going to bother with it now um, because it's too much. Yes, Chris could send a timer. I don't know when he'll be able to do it, but at the end of the day, the more I'm leaving that machine in the shed, the more worse condition it's going to get. I might as well just put it out of its misery. I mean, the dryer duct is broken on it for one. The door is broken. That door alone, the trim costs fifteen pound. A latch will cost the natural latch plus the uh, with the lever on it will cost about six pound more. So there you go, it's about twenty one pound on it. Uh, and as for the dryer duct, I the only thing I'll be able to do is take that up with duct tape, and that is just not going to be a very good repair for it. Not if water gets in there, and not if I have an unbalanced load, and that spins. Plus, as well, the machine was emitting smoke somehow from the drum. Uh, but we believe it was the main suppressor that was doing it. We bypassed that, but at the end of the day, it still wasn't smelling good when it was spinning. Uh, so, I don't know, really. So, I did offer the machine on service wash. No one wanted it, but uh, <clears throat> I'll probably salvage some parts of it and keep uh, for future use. Now, I will be looking for another creeder in the future. Hopefully a 17332, like the one I was supposed to have from a certain someone, but anyway. Uh, that's another story. You guys all know what happened about that machine. That lovely, almost new Creed washer dryer I tested up at Service Gems. That was originally meant to be mine. So anyway, I've uh, got my eye on two washer dryers. One of them's available, and the other one I'm thinking of if it ever pops up. But, as I said, don't bank on it. The other one that I was originally going to get, uh, when I was in Rochester, I mentioned it to you. Um, that was going to be a Hoover Logic 1300 washer dryer, but I, re I didn't want it then because I realised I don't like the way the Logics really spin. I've just not really been a fan of the Logics. Even though I do like them, but I don't think I'd have one. Um, so that was that. So anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that little entertainment of that. Um, I'll let that be a lesson to you all though. If you get a vintage appliance, please check it over. As I said, don't always be fooled by how it looks. If it does, and if you are going to test them, make sure you've got power surge or surge guard um, extension leads or, or plugs, and you do have a breaker in your house because that could have ended up really bad. So, thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to keep it supreme and go with the flow and stay safe.